Hello, welcome to the knowledge debate of the University of Groningen. My name is Tamara Slief and I'm talking today with Professor um, Energy and Sustainability, uh, Katrine Jetma. Welcome. We're talking about today about uh, the energy crisis or is there going to be an energy crisis? Um, at the beginning of the year, the, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, panic uh, on the oil prices. The, uh, the prices rose to $100 uh, dollars a barrel. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to like $88. Mm -hmm. What is happening with the oil prices? Well, there has been a structural increasing trend in oil prices at, uh, about the last decade, from uh, a level of about 10 or $12 uh, dollar per barrel mm -hmm. to the present level, which are close to 100. So the oil prices have increased eightfold, roughly, during the last decade, which, by the way, is about similar to the oil price increase in the 1970s that we describe as the oil crisis period. And then they, everybody was very concerned, uh, and as you may or may not recall, in the 1970s, oil, oil prices increasing uh, eightfold in such a short period uh, led many to believe that the uh, world would change and there would be another uh, energy era. era. Well, actually, the, during the last decade, something similar happened uh, in, in terms of prices. However, the reason why it happened in the 1970s was quite different from, from the present in, increase in oil prices, because in the 1970s the main reason was OPEC, so holding back supply and driving up prices as a result. And as a result of all this, once OPEC turned out to be very successful then, um, they lost momentum, uh, oil prices in fact declined again in the 1980s and 1990s. But what's happening now? Yes, now it's, it's quite dif different. First of all, we realize, we call it peak oil, but we realize that the, um, the conventional reserves that can be explo explored and exploited relatively cheaply, we're running out of it. We're running out of it in, in, in probably the next two or three decades. So cheap oil is simply disappearing from this world, and we're realizing this. And secondly, uh, demand for oil has increased tremendously. I mean, the last uh, 40 years, um, the demand for oil has uh, um, uh, become three, three times higher than it used to be those, those days. So, and particularly the last decade, the, uh, uh, the demand for oil is increasing very rapidly, five, six, seven percent per annum. So there's a demand-driven price increase that, that's now going on uh, these days. And, and uh, probably a third factor is that the production areas are perceived increasingly as being politically sensitive. Uh, particularly new uh, fields in Nigeria, Venezuela, uh, Iraqi uh, situation, of course, are all characterized by political in instability and turmoil. So they are no longer reliable traditional OPEC suppliers, but they are er unreliable suppliers. So these factors together add to this surge in the, in the prices during the last decade. So is oil really running out? Well, we are running out of cheap oil anyhow. Uh, there has been a huge debate in the literature in the past uh, uh, which is uh, characterized as a peak oil discussion or the peak uh, oil debate. It started with an article uh, of a geologist uh, from U.S. Uh, Hubbard in uh, 1969 uh, in which article he predicted the uh, peak of the American oil production and he said this is going to happen in the early 1970s. And he turned to be perfectly right, and he also predicted that after that um, the oil production in the U.S. would decline to half the level uh, in the 1970s uh, about now, which also turned to, to be uh, almost exactly right. So some people just say if Hubbard has been completely right with respect to the United States, he probably also is going to be right with respect to the whole world oil production. And then if you would follow Hubbard's uh, argument, uh, the peak oil is there, so oil production is at its peak about this period and is going to decline during the next uh, two to three decades. That's what Hubbard predicts. However, the criticism of Hubbard is that he did not in take into account, being a geologist, the economic factors. For instance, if you're running out of oil, oil becomes more expensive. Um, and if oil becomes more expensive, people are looking around for other sources of oil, uh, deeper soil sources, tar sands, etc., etc. So, and what we actually see is if you confront Hubbard speak for the whole world, with the actual oil production, we are going for the peak. We indeed succeed in um, um, increasing further our oil production, whereas Hubbard already would have suggested that we should be in the decline. And the reason, again, is because we are looking for um, other sources of oil. Um, this is more expensive oil. It's more polluting oil, but yet there's a lot of activity going on. Tar sands, uh, creating oil from coal, 
uh, creating oil from gas, creating oil from biomass, etc. So all these kind of developments are now going on because the world needs the oil and a cheap, uh, uh, easily um, explorable oil. That's something we're running out. Are all the demand. Is well, demand is going up and up, and we simply have to face and that. And supply the, is going down. Yeah, what well, is supply of the cheap uh, conventional oil? That is, we're running out of it. So forget about uh, the twenty dollar per barrel oil prices in the future, because that oil will not be longer available in a few decades from now. But there are other sources of oil, but they are more more expensive. That that's one issue. So we have to accept uh, higher oil prices. But uh, that's my concern. They're also much more polluting. If you want, for instance, to turn coal into oil, you have a lots of CO2 emissions associated to it. So we have to find solutions in terms of carbon capture and storage, etc. Otherwise, we have a big environmental problem. In the meantime, I think the big issue is that everyone wants to have access to the cheap oil. And that's just concentrated in a relatively small number of countries only. Everyone, everybody wants to have it and wants to have access to it. So we're getting so war on oil? We well, it's getting that. scarcer and scarcer, and it's increasingly dominated by national uh, oil companies, so, so basically politically driven entities that are responsible for e exploration. So indeed, there is an increasing tendency of conflict, you could say, to get access to it, to the Middle East reserves. On the longer term, we have to go to, in the end, non-fossil -foss fuels, so renewables, etc., etc. That's an extremely important uh, transition that we have to go through. But we, for the, let's say for the, for the first... And is that doable? Is that feasible? Yes, of course. In the, on, on the long term, it's definitely feasible to turn towards renewables. The question is how much time it will require and how much money it will cost. But uh, say 100 years from now, there, there's no doubt that the, 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 the major part of our energy system will be based on renewables 100 years from now. Now we are in a transition, and the transition is characterized by still a substantial and fastly growing demand for oil oil products. We simply need them in our system uh, for the next uh, decades or so. Um, and we see that the conventional oil, we're running out of it. So we're moving towards alternative so sources of oil. And that's a big challenge in itself. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome.